Sweden, a country located in the northern Europe and occupies the greater part of the Scandinavian peninsula, which it shares with Norway. The land slopes gently from the high mountains along the Norwegian frontier eastward to the Baltic Sea. Geologically, it is one of the oldest and most stable parts of the Earth's crust. As of 2013, Sweden's population was estimated to be 9.64 million people, making it the 90th most populous country in the world. The country is highly industrialized, with 85% of the population residing in urban areas. Sweden hosts a large proportion of the species that are threatened at European level, and thus has the important responsibility for protecting these species within its territory. Having said that, species in Sweden thus require greater action to improve their status. While many species already receive some conservation attention, others do not. Species can be saved from extinction, but this requires a combination of sound research and careful coordinated efforts. With that said, the aim of this project is to devise a systematic and ecological conservation plan for Sweden, using computer software to create portfolios of planning units that meet specified conservation targets whilst minimizing the conservation costs. Sweden occupies a total area of 450,295 km squared, comprising of a large biodiversity of which 9% consists of freshwater. Forests and woodlands cover 68% of the land surface, and agricultural land only covers approximately 8% of the land surface, slightly less than open wetlands which is 9.5%. Southern Sweden is predominantly agricultural with increasing forest coverage. The shift from agriculture to industry began in the 1930s and developed rapidly during the post-war period. This video clip obtained from Google Earth illustrates the current distribution of only the largest polygons of protected areas in Sweden. As you can see, the distribution is uneven and scattered throughout the country. Of open mountain areas, 46% or 1.8 million hectares have been protected. The national parks represent the most outstanding examples of Sweden's natural landscapes. The first national parks were established in 1909 already, and a hundred years later, there are now 29 national parks in Sweden. Costa Havid National Park, which was inaugurated in 2009, is the latest national park. In addition, there are more than 3,500 nature reserves covering a vast variety of Sweden nature types. From Costa to Havid, we move on to the Findel for Jarlands nature reserve in legendary Lapland, which is not only the largest nature reserve in Sweden, but also one of the largest protected areas in the whole of Europe. At 560,000 hectares, Findelfin Jarlands Nature Reserve is hugely impressive in terms of its dimension, geological and climatic diversity, and also the species flora and fauna that needs its protection to survive. Wolverines, brown bears, lynx and the critically endangered arctic fox are resident in the Findelfin Jarland Nature Reserve, which is also a keystone species, and the area is also home to a number of bird species, including the majestic golden eagle. In fact, Findel van Jarlen is a hugely important refuge for a number of threatened Scandinavian species. So, how has this done? Firstly, download the country level data from www.divagis.org. The marshland cover was then extracted from DivaGIS and imported into Terset, which is a geospatial and monitoring system. Depending on what data you need for your country, other files were also downloaded and imported in order to create a final map. The legend associated with the map was based on the GLC 2000 legend. In order to make the maps look more colourful and realistic, several palette files were created. Once that was completed, the country's protected areas was downloaded from www.protectedplanet.net. The reclass function was then used to remove all natural land use layers. Once that was done, hexagons from ArcView GIS was used to generate planning units according to the administration of the country. Thereafter, for the ecological planning units, a watershed was constructed using the data that consisted of elevation, water and ecoregions. The hexagon and ecological plan units were then imported into Terset. 
Once that was completed, the species distributions were then downloaded from www.iucnredlist.org. The endemic species shapefiles were then converted to vectors and thereafter raster files. Using the data, a tenure map was created consisting of the agricultural areas, protected areas and artificial land use. And after that, a tenure assessed map was created using the, just the protected areas. Lastly, the tenure and tenure assessed files were then incorporated into Markson independently to generate the analysis for an ecological and systematic conservation approach. Sweden is a host to an estimated 50,000 species of animals and plants. This number represents 32% of the total species described for Europe and could represent more than 3% of the species in the world. Approximately 16% of the species assessed by the European Red List of Species are present in Sweden. Of the total number of species assessed in the country, 3% are considered threatened and at least 7% are near threatened at European level. Many of these species are endemic to Sweden and are found nowhere else in the world. Species that are considered threatened at the European level and occur in Sweden are found mostly in grasslands, forests and wetlands. These ecosystems require particular attention in order to ensure the habitats of these sensitive species remain. 16 endemic species in particular were chosen for this conservation project. Of these, 7 were mammals. Sweden hosts 31% of all mammals that occur in Europe. Birds consisted of 4 species. 3 fish species were selected as well as one crustacean. <clears throat> and lastly, one insect being the hermit beetle. Of the 950 species assessed that occur in Sweden, the beetles have one of the highest abundances. Habitat loss, fragmentation and degradation are the most significant threats at the European level to species that occur in Sweden. For freshwater species, major threats include water pollution caused by agricultural and forestry effluent, which in many cases is further exacerbated by natural systems modification, climate change and agricultural expansion. Other major threats come from logging, wood harvesting, urbanization and tourism. Results For the ecological conservation approach, ecological planning units was used. The results produced by Mark Sand for the ecological planning units illustrate map A being current protected areas of Sweden and map B being new areas for conservation. The total area that the species are currently protected in is 3,189,474 hectares. Whereas the new areas for conservation that Markson generated covers an additional 15,564,415 hectares, as you can see more clearly in map C. The systematic conservation approach used was based on hexagonal planning units. Sweden is comprised of 938 hexagons. There are many different kinds of other shapes that can be used for planning units. But hexagons, in my opinion, produces more efficient and less fragmented portfolios. Hexagons can also be arranged in a more spatially compact manner and therefore need fewer superfluous planning units to form patches containing the important conservation features. The results for systematic planning units? The results produced by Markson for the systematic planning units illustrate map A being current protected areas of Sweden and map B being new areas for conservation. The total area that the species are currently protected in is 4,938,893 hectares, whereas the new areas for conservation that Marks and generated covers an additional 13,111,639 hectares, as you can see more clearly in map C. Using both the ecological and systematic approaches, there were differences that existed in the results produced by Markson. Firstly, the ecological conservation approach generated more land conservation areas than the systematic approach. The systematic approach, however, protected more species than the ecological planning units. The systematic approach was able to protect 12 out of the 16 species. 
The four species unprotected are the Lutra Lutra, Kalinago media, Asticus asticus, and Aquila crusatos. Possible reasons to why these species do not fall into protected regions could be because of urbanization, railways, roads, agricultural lands, and industrialization act as barriers and thus prevent the opportunity for these species to be conserved. On the other hand, they could already have been protected as only the largest polygons of Sweden protected areas were used in this particular project. It is important to mention that the conservation targets set aside for the species were not altered in any way, which proves that a large number of species in Sweden are already protected. Sweden has implemented conservation efforts through the establishment of many conservation areas over hundreds of years already. The Swedish government Environmental Protection Agency bears the main responsibility for nature protection in Sweden. The 21 county administrative boards are normally responsible for the administration and management of national parks and nature reserves. However, some national parks are administrated by special trusts. According to this, it is evident that nature plays a vital role in the Swedish culture. Sweden's laws have also permitted their citizens to roam freely in the Swedish countryside, providing that they do not harm the biodiversity in any way. With less than 3% of Sweden's land developed, or built up, and 69% of it consisting of forests, the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency has a lot of land to choose from for their future preservation projects. And thus Sweden's main slogan is don't disturb and don't destroy.